Hello, how are you? It's Sunday school time. Wonderful. It is Sunday school time and I know you've been having fun with all the other lessons that you've been doing. It's another Sunday and then we are saying Sunday school. No talking. Well done. Okay, so we are going to start our lesson for today and as we always do, we are going to start with a word of prayer and then we are going to have our action song. And then we will move into our lesson. So all of you up, up, up. Let's close our eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Good. So let's pray. Most high and everlasting Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for the opportunity to come and share your word, to learn from you. We pray that give us receptive hearts, help us be able to understand your word and live by it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good. So like I said, it's Sunday school time. Well done. So we would move on to watch our Sunday school action song and then back to the board for our lesson. So see you. by dying on the cross. Jesus fulfilled God's plan of salvation by dying on the cross. Then we have our super verse which is taken from Psalm 22 verses 16b and it says that they have pierced my hands and feet. Psalm 22 verses 16b. Wonderful. So that is what we are looking at what today and then the whole you know, as part of what um, I, he is raising lesson. Very good. Now, we noticed that in our two previous lessons, we looked at still he is risen, and then but we for the same lesson we looked at two different things. First lesson looked at what sin because where our memory verse was what on John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish or should not perish but have everlasting life. So we focused on sin. What was sin? You guys gave me excellent definition of what sin is. And then, okay, so who can remind me? Who can just remind me what sin is? Uh-huh. You are smart. Sin is anything we do, say, or even think that 
goes against the word of God or that does not please God. It's a sin and we named a lot of the sins, stealing, fighting and etc. and etc. Then in the second lesson we looked at, it says forgiveness. Jesus forgives what our sins and so we also ought to forgive those who sin against us. So that's what we looked at and today we are looking at what? God's amazing plan. And the focus, what we want to hammer on in this lesson is that doing the will of God. What does it mean to do the will of God? We are looking at Jesus. Did Jesus actually do the will of God? What was the will of God that Jesus had to come and fulfill? We are going to look at it. And so that's why our super tree says that Jesus fulfilled God's plan of salvation by dying on the cross. Now, as we always do, we are going to watch a super book video. And I keep saying that apart from the first lesson and all the other lessons that we'll have, we are going to just pick excerpt of what, you know, um, from the video that goes with our lesson. Okay, so just give me a minute and then we are all going to watch the story on the screen. If you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Are you the king of the Jews? Are you asking this on your own? Or did someone tell you about me? Your own people and the chief priests brought you to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not of this world. Are you a king then? You say I am a king. Actually, I was born and came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. What is truth? Take him and scourge him. Do you not know that I have the power to crucify you, and the power to release you? You could have no power at all against me, unless it had been given you from above. Bring him outside. People of Jerusalem! Behold the man! So you want me to nail your king to a cross? No! Please! You can't! Crucify him! Crucify him! We have no king but Caesar! Are you okay? What's 
just gotten into them. I am innocent of this man's blood. You see to it. for Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. No. No! Woman, behold your son. John, behold your mother. From this day forward, I shall care for her as if she were my own. I'm thirsty. Give him water. I got some sour water. Welcome back. We are back from watching the video. And as we saw, we noticed when Jesus was what praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And then um, he, he said something in his prayer. We'll come back to it. And then we see how it was betrayed by Judas. He was taken to Pilate. And then what happened he was crucified. He died and he resurrected again. Beautiful. So the interest, you know, for this particular lesson is the prayer that Jesus made in the Garden of Gethsemane before Judas betrayed him. Now, let's quickly open our Bibles to Mark chapter 14, verses 33. Mark chapter 14, verses 33. Mark 14, we are reading from 33 to 41. Mark chapter 14, verses 33 to 41. Are we all there? Okay. So let's try and read it together. We are starting from the verse 33. So ready? Let's all go. He took Peter, James, and John along with him. 
and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the arm might pass from him. Abba Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for me for, sorry, could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough! The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer, if you are the 42. Excellent. Now, from this but what we have just read, I mean, we can see it in what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, when Jesus was praying and then his disciples were asleep and all of that. I have a few questions and you know what we do when it is question time? We do partner talk. So when I give out the questions, make sure that you're discussing it with the partner or the person sitting by you. So my first question says that, why did Jesus go to the garden to pray? Why did he go to the garden to pray? What was it for? Why did he go? Uh, now talk, pray, start. Okay, my next question says that and listen very well. Now when Jesus was praying in the garden, this is what he said. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Maybe we'll just read it from what, um, what we read from the Bible. If you look at the verse 36, he says, I'm a father, I'm a father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Not what I will, but what you will. Now, what do you think was Jesus' will? He says, yeah, not what I will, but what you will. So, what do you think was Jesus' will? What do you think he was wishing for? What do you think he wished would happen? What was his will that he's saying that I wish you could fulfill my will, but not my will, you know, but let yours be done. I, I, I wish I could do mine, but at the end of the day, the decision lies in your hands. So what do you think was Jesus' will? Partner talk, please. Some of you are watching me talk with a partner. Okay. Okay. Now, if we have talked about Jesus' will, now what do you think was God's will? We, we, we've discussed So what do you think was God's will? That's what Jesus said. Yet not my will, but your will be done. So what was the will of God that Jesus says, well, let your will be done. What you think should be done, let it be done. Okay, so let's, the, the next question says that, do you think if Jesus had his way, he would not have gone to the cross? If he had his way, would he have opted out of being crucified? Discuss, please. Okay, now the final question was Whose will won at the end of the day? Whose will came to pass? 
Excellent. Okay, so let's go through our questions. Why did Jesus pray in the garden of Gethsemane? Why did he go there to pray? Uh-huh. Let me hear your answers, okay? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Any other? Okay. Well done. I think you're all saying the same thing. You know, he went to the garden like the Bible said. He was deeply troubled. He was distressed. His heart was heavy. He was, you know, something was going to happen and it troubled him. He was worried. He was so anxious. Like this coronavirus when it came. He watched TV and people, thousands of people are dying. And now no school, no church, don't even go out. And we are like, you get so anxious. You are troubled. You wonder, is the world coming to an end? Very similar situation. Okay, well done. Now, Jesus said, not my will, but yours be done. So what do you think was Jesus' will? As we asked, what was your answer? Mm, mm hmm Okay. Really? Wow. Okay. That's good. So some are saying that, you know, he wished he could continue to stay with his parents, you know, continue to live on earth grow old you know and then maybe eventually die oh, and then some of you are also saying that oh jesus wished that yes maybe he would die but but through the cross it was painful you know it, it looked so painful and it was something that brought shame was full of shame so he wished that maybe yes they will find another way of, of killing him but oh, not, not necessarily on the cross you know maybe they will put him in prison uh, maybe after killing him, that was enough. That's all excellent answers, you guys. I'm really thinking deep, and I, I like that. Now, what was, what do you think was God's will? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, yes. Wow. So, God's will was for Jesus to die on the cross. Jesus fulfilled God's plan of salvation by dying on the cross. That was God's will for us or for Jesus to die on the cross. Do you think that if Jesus had his way, he would have chosen something else or maybe he, would have, he wouldn't have really gone to the cross to die? Yes, beautiful. Now where in the Bible do you think you can find this? Or from the text we read, yes. Beautiful. When we look at the, um, the verses 35 and 36, he says that going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. So maybe even just the 35. If possible, the hour might pass from him. So God, I'm praying, please, I wish that this one would pass. It will even come to pass. Yes, it means that if, I mean, he was praying of God, he says that with you all things are possible, so you can even change it for me. Yet, not my will, but your will be done. So yes, Jesus was hoping that something could happen, that could change, and then he wouldn't go to the cross. So whose will was chosen? God, well done, because eventually Jesus had to go and die on the cross. So this tells us that doing what God tells us to do always brings us victory. That is why when Jesus died, he did not remain in the grave, but what happened? He rose again from the dead. And that is why we also have what our salvation and then the forgiveness of sin. So when we pick our super truth, what does it say to us? Jesus fulfilled God's plan of salvation by dying on the cross. What does it say? Jesus fulfilled God's plan of salvation by dying on the cross. Excellent. He fulfilled God's plan of salvation. And that is what this one is telling us. He did 
the will of God, and the will of God was to what? Bring salvation to us. And how were we going to get the salvation? By Jesus dying on the cross. And the question I'm even asking is that how did he die? When he we we read, you know, what kind of death did he go through? We know he was crucified. How was he crucified? They have pierced my hands and feet. His hands and feet were pierced so that God's plan of salvation could come to pass. So let's quickly read through our super verse again. Psalm 22, verse 16b. And what does it say? They have pierced my hands and feet. One more time. Uh huh. Where are we taking it from? Beautiful. Psalm. 22 verses 16b. That is where we are taking our text from. Well done. Now, what is salvation? If you look at our super truth, it says that he fulfilled God's plan of salvation. What is salvation? Yes, partner, talk. Mm -hmm. Talk with your partner and then give me your answers quickly. Okay, good. What is salvation? Mm hmm. To save. Yes. Any other? To redeem. Yes. To rescue. Uh -huh. Do we have any other? To set free. To set free. Beautiful. To save. To redeem, to rescue, to set free. What, 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 what happened to us that we needed to be set free? We were all bound by sin, as we learned from our previous lesson. And that's why the Bible says that, for we have all sinned. Isn't it? Romans 3, 23. For we have all sinned and we've fallen short of the glory of God. And because of that, we were all bound by sin. And so Jesus came to do what? Give us salvation by dying on the cross, by having his hands and feet pierced, so that through the blood that he shed, we can have a forgiveness of sins. Jesus had to do the will of God so that we can also do what? Benefit from it. Now I'm going to take you outside to do a quick game. And then when we come back, the game is about, it's called the game of the wells. So we are going to see how and whether it's really easy or it's difficult to do the will of God. So let's go out and then take, so let's go. Come outside and I have these containers here. What do you see written on it? God's will. Beautiful. And then I have these containers, two baskets, what do we have? My well. And I have these ones, what do I have? My well. Beautiful. So these containers are going to be down here. Good. And apart from the containers, I also have here a basket of balls. Now, I'm going to start here with a basket of balls and I'm going to pick a number of the balls, three of them, and I'm going to throw them. Now, the target is that every ball is supposed to enter God's will, the container with God's will, that's where the balls are supposed to enter. So we are going to try and see how many we get to, you know, enter the will of God and how many falls off and then how many you know goes into my will. Okay. So I'm standing over here, okay, on this line, and I'm going to get it ready, set, go. Oops. Okay. Ready, set, go. Ouch. Ready. Now, 
down, I have a solid pickle on that yes. And then let's see. Okay. Okay. So this is what I got. I got two of the balls, my wells, and then one of them in both well. And what happened to the rest of them? I missed them. Beautiful. So we'll go back to the classroom and then continue that discussion. So let's go. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the game we played outside. You can try it at home yourself too and see, you know, how um, you can also try and hit the target. I had about 12 balls and then I could get only one to enter the will of God. I could get only two to be my wills, even the one that fell, so long as it didn't fall into the container that says God's will, it means that whether it fell out or it fell into the basket, it didn't enter the will of God. Beautiful. So clap for me, I've done well. Thank you. Haven't I done well? Didn't I do well? I tried. But then that I missed a lot of them. Okay. So let's look quickly um, at what we did. Now, what do you think I needed to do to get me to make sure my ball entered the container that had the will of God? What do you think I needed to do? To pay attention. I needed to pay attention. I had so many baskets, you know, maybe I was being attracted by the color and all of that, you know, so yes, I kept the same. What else? I needed to focus. I needed to make sure that my eye was just on the God's will basket, I mean, container. And even when I was doing what I needed to make sure that that was my focus, that was my target. I needed to concentrate. Brilliant. So this one is telling us that it is actually so difficult for us to fulfill the, I mean, the will of God. Virtually impossible. We are not able to fulfill the will of God. Because look at the ones I've missed. And this is what is happening in our life. You need to read your Bible. And then you, you have other plans. You know, now that you are staying at home, so much to do. There's TV, you can, you know... Yes, a lot of you are saying you are bored, but then the TV is there. Now you maybe you are having a phone, a tablet. You spend your whole day, you know, on these things, and you know you're supposed to read the word of God. You're not supposed, you know, you're supposed to pray, have your quiet time, and so many other things are distracting you. If you need to do the word of God, we need to pay attention. We need to be very intentional. Say that I want to do it. We need to focus. We need to concentrate. We need to make time to do it isn't it excellent and because it is difficult for us to be able to fulfill the work i mean the will of god that is why jesus came to die on the cross for us and so like we learned last week it says that the blood of jesus is son that's what cleanses us washes us purifies us from all sin and it is because of this reason that we keep missing or we are not able to hit the target. That's why God sent his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. It is because we will miss and we, it is difficult for us to miss the target. That's why what God sent Jesus to come and fulfill what? His plan of salvation by dying on the cross as the super truth says. And how can we you know, tap into this. He says by confessing our sins, by acknowledging that we are sinners, by asking Jesus to come and live in our hearts. Then and then only can we say that we have the forgiveness of sins. God will forgive us even when we fall and he will strengthen us to be able to do his will. You are here, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal savior. You, this is the time for you to do it. You have the opportunity. Jesus is calling you. He says that yes, you are not able to do this and that because you do not know me. But when you know me, I will give you the strength to be able to overcome it. 
Jesus is calling you. If you are willing to say this prayer, would you lift up your hands, close your eyes, and say this prayer after me? Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. I, I, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Today, with my mouth, I confess Jesus as Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. If he said this prayer, can you imagine what is happening? Let me even tell you the song that they are singing. Hallelujah. Eh? Oh. Hallelujah. Oh. Eh, eh, eh. Hallelujah. Eh? Oh. It's a sound of victory. Do you know why it's a sound of victory? Because God has redeemed you from the hands of the evil one. So he has won victory over the enemy. So the angels are all rejoicing, rejoicing, rejoicing because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord. You are so special, you don't know. Heavens are rejoicing. They have written your name. I want to even believe the angels are going saying that God see your new child. You are so excited because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we are looking at, even when we read, every day when we read or when we say the Lord's Prayer, what do we say? Um, we, when we look at Matthew chapter 10, 6 verses 10, it says that let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we are looking at the will of God. Jesus came to fulfill the will of God. And what was the will of God? To bring salvation to us. What about you? How easy is it for you to fulfill the will of God? Even as a child of God, you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. But you are still finding it difficult to, you know, do the will of God. This whole week, how many times did you read your Bible? How many times did you do your quiet time? Alone, not with your parents. How many times did you say, I want to pray? How many times were you able to put up the TV, put down the phone, put down the tablet, and say that I am going to read my Bible, I'm going to learn my memory verse? What is God's will for you? You come to Sunday school. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. come and usher. Hey, me. No, I can't be an usher. Come and lift praise and worship. Hey, me, I can't sing. And you can sing. Remember when you go to school and we want people, you know, you and your gang of friends. That's why you know, I know my level and all the choreography you can do it. I know my level. But when you come to the house of God, you don't want to do anything for God. God is calling you. He has a plan for you. He God had a plan for Jesus and the plan was to do what? Come and die on the cross. Jesus, God is not telling you to come and die for anybody. But he has a plan for you. What is his plan for you? That you do his will. That you do what is right. Your life will be an example to a lot of children. And also they will come to know Christ. What is God's plan for you? What gifts has he given you that he wants you to use that you are not using? Are you fulfilling the will of God in your life? Are you fulfilling the plans of God in your life? That is what Jesus. So we are looking at Jesus' as an example of how he fulfilled the will of God by saying, not as I will but your will be done. You are a child of God. Even all of us, we pray for forgiveness of sins and God forgives us. Then we go to school. You know, you have a friend who, um, yes, you open a classmate who goes to say something really bad about you to your teachers, even to other people. And then what happens? Your teacher doesn't even listen to your side of the story and then he or she punishes you. Ah, he disgraces you in front of the class and even in front of the school, the whole school. And then you vow and tell yourself that me, you see the way you hit your chest, me, if I talk to this girl, if even her shadow crosses my path, what I will do to her? Oh God, God, somebody will hold me that day. 
That is your will. That is your will that you will take revenge. But what is the will of God? The Bible says that. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Somebody has sinned against you. Jesus says that God says, forgive the person. Even Jesus goes on to say that if the person does the same thing seven times in one day, what are you supposed to do? Forgive the person. So you are thinking of, oh, this girl. And then you remember what you learned at Sunday school says that forgive. Now you have two options. Are you going to go with your will or are you going to go with the will of God? Are you going to say, I will never talk to her? Or are you going to say that I forgive you because I love you, because Jesus loves you? Now God, look at Jesus, the way he was distressed, the pain, he said, God, if possible. But then at the end of the day, he says that, not my will, but your will be done. And eventually we all said that, well, the will of God won the day. Jesus' will was thrown to the back, but God's will came to pass. Are you willing to throw your will away and then fulfill the will of God? You are at home, and I know that for some of you, it's been mommy screaming, you talking back, fighting here and there, talking back, doing this, your room, your room is all messy, mommy keeps talking, daddy keeps, everybody is, you know. And then you get up and mommy says something, you get so angry, and you want to even talk back at her. Let her know that she can't talk to you like that, even though you are a child. That is your will. And what does the will of God say? Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your mother and your father. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down house. We are so what? Angry. That is the will of God. What is yours? Oh, let me also tell her my piece of mind. I'm even tired of her. You're saying in your head. But oh, what is the will of God? Respect your parents. Honor your mom, your mother, and your father. In your anger, do not sin. Yes, you are angry, but do not talk back. Which one are you going to choose? Your own will or the will of God? And that is what we are learning. Jesus said he wished he could go with his will, but Lord, not his will, but your will be done. And eventually, Jesus' will was thrown away in the will of God. Are you willing to throw your will away and allow the will of God to succeed? Jesus is counting on you. Jesus is counting on you. And so we are going to pray. It is difficult. Even for me, going outside and throwing the ball, see how I miss plenty. But because Jesus fulfilled God's plan of salvation by dying on the cross, I can always ask for forgiveness of sin. And God will forgive me and he will strengthen me so that the next time I will get it right. We are going to pray as a child of God that the Lord himself will strengthen you so that every day when you, you are tempted to do what you want to do, you remember Jesus' sacrifices on the cross where he fulfilled the will of God and you will let go your will and let the will of God prevail. Pray and ask Jesus. Pray and ask God to strengthen you, to help you to be able to do this. Pray. Ask him for strength. Ask him for grace. He's willing. He will do it for you. In Jesus' name, happy prayer and thanksgiving. Amen. And I know that definitely God will not leave us alone, but he's going to help us. You remember we did this cross the other time? Good, I told you to keep it because you are going to use it. Now, what you are going to do is that across here, you are going to write, I want your will to be done, not mine. I want your will to be done, not mine. You are going to write it across. Now, what are some of the things that especially staying at home? Oh, you know you are supposed to do, 
but you're giving excuses and finding it difficult to do. Write them. That is your prayer topic. You are putting it on, it's on the cross. You are laying it on the cross. You are giving it to Jesus to help you to do it. So I want to read my Bible more. I want to pray more. I want to show more respect. There are things that are the way of God. But you are finding it difficult to do. Write it down. And every day, take it, read it, and pray over it and say, God, help me. God, help me. And he will be able to help you. So we'll look at our super truth again for the last time. And what does it say? Jesus fulfilled God's plan of salvation by dying on the cross. Again, only you, let's go. Beautiful. And then we are going to look at our super verse for the day. And what does it say? I have Psalm 22, verse 16b. They have pierced my hands and feet. Psalm 22, verse 16b. Well done, only you, let's go. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Psalm 22, verse 16b. Okay, so we are going, we are closing, we are breaking our Sunday school lesson to a close. I hope you enjoyed it. And keep praying, keep seeking the face of God, and I know God is going to help you. So I'm going to just end it with this song that summarizes everything that we have done today. It's called, I Pledge Allegiance to the Lamb. Some of you might have heard it and even know how to sing it. But I'm not going to sing the whole song, but this is about some people, Christians, long time ago, who were told that if they keep following Jesus, if they don't deny him, they're going to kill them. And then they said, well... For us to live and go to belong to Satan, we'd rather die and be with Jesus. So they chose to die. So when they were even going to be killed, what they did was that they were singing, they were happy, I mean, they were, they were rejoicing because now they too can die for Jesus. They lived to fulfill the will of God. So I'm just going to sing the chorus and then I'll say bye to all of you. So the chorus goes like this. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb with all my strength, with all I am. I will see to honor His command. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. I so let's try and if you don't sing it to me, let's go. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb with all my strength, with all I am. I will seek to honor His command. I pledge allegiance to the Lamb. Bye! And I'll see you next week. Up I go!